Today on Extreme 4x4, the search for the ultimate axle ends when we build a 609. And you know everybody loves potato salad. Especially the one famous for its carnage. We'll take you to Moab's legendary trail, Potato Salad Hill. Whether it's trail riding, competition rock crawling, short course racing, or even desert racing, the one constant in off-roading is the search for the ultimate part. Now you guys know what I'm talking about. We're looking for the perfect engine combination, bulletproof transmissions, bomb-proof transfer cases, and we're always on the lookout for stronger axles. Because, to be honest, to say that we push these parts to their limit is an understatement. Off-roading is probably the only motorsport that basically revolves around trying to break the unbreakable, all in order to tear it apart and build it bigger and better the next time. And just like the old saying goes, if you build a better mousetrap, the world will be the path to your door. And that's what we're gonna build today. Probably the newest thing to hit axles since the invention of the Hypoid gear set. And it's a hybrid axle. It's called a 609. It borrows the strength of two popular axle assemblies. One being the Ford 9 inch with its removable third member, and the other being the Dana 60 with its super strong outer knuckles and rear bearing supports. Now, this axle assembly has become so popular lately, companies like Spider Tracks Off Road offer complete kits to build your own wheel hub to wheel hub. Now, today we're going to take you step by step through the process of building a complete custom axle assembly. And the first thing you need to do is set your width. Now, in order to truly nail the width on your custom axle assembly, it's a good idea to have your tires and wheels already picked out for the project. Now, in this case, we're going to be using these Interco IROC 39.5 by 13.5 tires. They have an aggressive three-stage lug design, and the outer lugs actually have a scoop cut into them that really help this thing bite into the mud and dirt. The siping that's cut into the tire blocks actually opens up as the tire heats up to help the tire with cleanout, and the tread compound as well as the tough sidewall really makes these tires shine on the rocks. We are mounting them on trail ready 17 by 10 steel bead locks with a high polished extra wide ring to protect the valve stem. The recessed fasteners help protect the bolt heads from the rocks to prevent bead lock failure during extreme rock crawling. To help set the width of our rear axle, we're going to use two pieces of 3 inch exhaust tubing that slide inside of each other with two unit bearings mounted on either end. Now the nice thing about using a mock-up assembly like this is not only can we build all the brackets and tabs to fit this exhaust tubing and then transfer it to the rear axle, but because we have this sliding feature built in, we can set the axle at different widths and try them out. Let's say we wanted to try 70 inches. We just slide these tubes, tack them, and then we can cycle the suspension up and down, see if the tire is hitting any tubes or body panels. If the width is too wide or too narrow, just cut the tack, move it to a different one, and try it there. You can't really do that with a real axle because it's fixed. And plus, since this thing is just really light exhaust tubing, all we have to do is tack welder brackets on with a real light tack, and that'll make them a lot easier to move around if we have to. With our mock-up axle in place, and temporarily tacked to the link ends, we can set our first width at 60 inches flat. Now this is obviously the point in time when you want to articulate our mock-up axle and see if it hits any part of our chassis or truck. Now if you're doing this with removable body panels on your buggy, you're going to want to put those back on at this time. Now you can see on this chassis with a 60 inch width that this tire is going to start to get into this lower bar before the suspension is fully compressed. So the solution is simple. Basically change our mock-up width, come a little wider, and then retest it. We don't want to go too wide though because we don't want to limit the trails we can ride on. And plus, anything that comes down the side of this chassis on the rub rail, we want to make sure it actually hits the tire. It doesn't get hung up between the tire and the axle and basically stop us on the trail. And we don't want to go too narrow either because then the chassis itself becomes top heavy and it's easy to roll over. Well now we're going to let you in on a little secret. We're not building these axles specifically for the spider. We're actually building them for a buggy that we're designing on a computer program. The chassis these will eventually live under 
I'm designing on a computer program called Ben Tech Pro. This way we can actually draw the axles on the screen and check where the tires will go. This is a mid-size four-seater chassis that we'll probably end up putting a V6 power plant in. With our mock-up complete and a width decided upon, we can finally start building some axles. Now you can build the 609 using junkyard parts. You just have to find an old Ford 9 inch like this one, strip it down, hope that it's straight, get a Dana 50 or a Dana 60 and cut the knuckle off, clean it out and weld it on the end of the housing. But there are some benefits to using the aftermarket pieces that we got from Spider Tracks. And it starts with the housing itself. This is a one piece steel shell that's specifically designed for rock crawling. It's one of the strongest in the aftermarket and it's way stronger than any stock nine inch ever was. The ceiling face has been CNC machined after the tubes have been welded into the housing. So we know we're gonna have a good seal as well as positive engagement into our axles. As you can see in this cutaway, the tolerances between the ring gear and the housing are super tight. So we're gonna have great ground clearance. At the end of the tubes, we're gonna be welding on an F450 big bearing cup, a unit bearing that's been modified to fit a 35 spline drive slug, and then we're gonna be installing Spider Track's new oversized brake rotor and four piston caliper. This will increase our braking up to 30%. Now all we have to do is transfer the measurements from our mock-up axle onto this new one and we can start to cut. Oh, and this thing only weighs 60 pounds. Knowing that the width of our axle is going to be 62 and a half inches, we need to do some math to plan our cuts. The wheel bearings and rotors add four inches of width to either end of the tube. So with it marked at 27 and a quarter inches from the pinion center, we can go ahead and cut. Now if you're using bearing ends from a junkyard axle, you need to assemble them to determine how much width you're going to add to your tube. Every setup will be different. Before final welding, recheck everything with a dry fit just to make sure. Coming up, we're going to Jeep Safari, Moab's annual event that brings in Jeepers far and wide. Stay tuned. Hell Dorado, Hell's Revenge, and Potato Salad Hill. To the uneducated, those may sound like B-rated slasher film titles, but to the hardcore four-wheeler can only mean one thing, Moab. Since 1966, the rocks around southern Utah have hosted the biggest off-road event in the world, the Moab Easter Jeep Safari. This is the Oz Fest of off-roading right here. If you're into four-wheel, this is the place you gotta be. And for nine days leading up to Easter, they arrive by the thousands. Moab has about seven, 8,000 people, and during Safari, we'll go up to almost 50,000 people. They come to run some of the 50 trails, which range from easy to extreme. Moab is the rock crawling capital of the world. I mean, you know, it doesn't get any better. Surrounded by epic scenery on every trail, Four-wheeling doesn't get any better than this. You gotta look at that awesome view in the background. You don't get that in Pennsylvania. It's breathtaking. Yes, it is. It's just something that you can't look in a book and, and understand until you come up here. The off-road companies are also here, providing awesome sights of their own. You've seen the manufacturers rolling out their best products and you're seeing them on a Jeep instead of in a catalog. It's awesome. On one of Moab's classic trails, today we're heading out on Hell's Revenge. Skyjacker hosted their annual Moab run and showed off their newest suspension system. We've got our six inch kit on this one, testing out our new rebuildable rod ends and long travel suspension kit. With his family on board, Moab rocks. <laughs> the new six inch lift made a mockery of even the toughest obstacles. We haven't gotten hung up or Hadn't found anything we couldn't do. It's been great. We articulated it and a lot of maneuvers up and down the trails and everything worked fine. We had a good driver, but the suspension helped out a lot. It has uh, proved to do very well. Fresh off getting his driver's license, 17-year-old Mark McKegg headed to the Skyjacker run. This is the way you want to spend your spring break. Sporting every accessory Skyjacker makes for the TJ, Mark's passion for the company started early on. Ever since Mark's been the, the little boy, he's been loving the Skyjacker parts. They have awesome stickers. <laughs> Long way from his boyhood sticker collection, Mark handled the rock more like a 17-year veteran of Moab. I think most of the fun is in the challenge of just having to guide the Jeep up over the obstacles, knowing that you could slide backwards or roll over at any moment and just pushing it through. 
The tip over challenge obstacle befuddled some, but not Mark. He takes it nice and slow and doesn't try to rush through everything. He hasn't rolled over and hopefully not anytime soon. When it came to the five rated hot tub, mom knows best. Mom said no. Well, I am the mom. <laughs> I can say no to the hot tub if I think I want to. <laughs> that didn't ruin Mark's first trip. I can't see myself ever stopping this. It's just too much fun. After a day on the trails, the action moves to the most famous hill in four-wheeling. We're at Potato Salad in Moab, Utah, and it's lots of fun. Potato Salad oh, Hill is man, just a classic. Huh? Getting its name from when the picnic stapled spilled during a roll, this place continues to put drivers into a pickle. From here, it looks like it's just ledges. Once you're up on it, you'll notice crazy angles to that hill that challenge everybody that attempts it. How's that? <laughs> That pretty much tells you what it's like. Some choose to watch what it's like. It takes guts, it, more than I have. As they say here on Potato Salad Hill, no guts, no glory. Well, sometimes you make it, sometimes you don't. It's a tough hill, man. It's slippery, it's bumpy, it's loose at the top, it throws you around, but good times in Moab. This is what it's all about, I will do it again. Now the guy behind the wheel on that Jeep, his name is Chad Dalton, and apparently he's climbed that hill many times without any problems. But I'll bet you, right about here, he's kind of wishing he'd put beadlocks on that Jeep. We're back on Extreme 4x4, and we're right in the middle of the step-by-step -step process of building two of the hottest axles to hit off-roading, and that's the Hybrid 609 assembly. Now we've already showed you how to select the width of any axle by using a mock-up assembly underneath our buggy. And then we went ahead and built the complete rear housing wheel mount to wheel mount. Now we can work on the front end. Obviously if it's the front end, it's going to need some type of steering knuckle. Now we're going to use Spidertrack's ultimate knuckle assembly. Now these things are a fully fabricated knuckle, so welding on them isn't going to be an issue like welding on cast. They use spherical bearings instead of ball joints that allow us to get a full 60 degrees worth of turning without binding. Now inside, it's large enough to fit any Dana 60 U-joint. We can fit the Bobby Long CVs for the Dana 60, or we can even fit in the new Spider Tracks 1550 joint. We know the total width is 62 and a half inches, but with a front axle, you need to calculate the location of your pinion. To find the new center of our front axle housing, we'll measure over eight inches from the pinion center line. Assembling the entire outer knuckle and brake assembly will help determine how much width they will add to the axle itself. For the Spider Tracks unit, it's 11 and 5 eighths of an inch. Now just like on the rear axle, all of our measurements for width are going to start right at our center line. Now we know that each knuckle is going to add 11 and 5 eighths to the end of the tube, or a total of 23 and a quarter to the total overall width. Now we want 62 and a half, so inside the knuckles is going to be 39 and a quarter, or 19 and 5 eighths from our center line. Now this is where we're going to have to get a little creative. If we come over 19 and 5 eighths of an inch from the center line, we really don't have much space on the tube to mount a suspension component, especially if we want to run leaf springs. Now it's a good idea to leave at least this much space between your housing and your knuckle, especially if you're using junkyard housings because they're made out of cast steel. You want to limit the amount of welding you do there. Now if we're going to move this over to make room for a leaf spring, all we're going to do is move the center line over until our 19 and 5 eighths lands on the outside of it. Now it's not a big deal. Ideally we want the pinion center line to be right in line with our transfer case output on the front, but if it's not, it's not that big of a deal. Now if the housing cut to length and the C's slid onto the tubes, we need to set the caster angle. Now caster is the relationship between the upper and lower ball joint and true vertical. And we want about three to five degrees of positive caster or leaning back of this knuckle. Now to check this, we're going to set our third member mounting flange at 10 degrees up to lessen the pinion angle for the front. And then we can just drop another angle finder on top of the knuckle and we're trying to chase down three to five degrees of leaning back. Now what this will do is it'll help the truck when you're driving it, help the tires do what's called return to center, and it'll also remove any death wobble. Well, return to center, obviously let go of the steering wheel, the wheels come back to straight, just like on a shopping cart, and death wobble, we've all had that shopping cart with the crazy caster, you don't want your wheels doing that.
Now, caster is not the only measurement we're concerned with on our front axle. When we ordered our wheels from Trail Ready, we ordered a very specific zero offset. That means that the mounting flange of the wheel is pressed in so it's dead center inside the rim shell itself. Now, this is going to affect what's called scrub radius. Now, scrub radius is measured by an imaginary line drawn once again through your upper and lower ball joint and where it hits the ground, and an imaginary line drawn right through the center of the tire and where it hits the ground. This distance is your scrub radius. Now, if you wanted a wider set of axles but didn't want to build them, and you ordered custom wheels that pushed the tire out further, you're actually going to increase that scrub radius. Now, you want to keep this scrub radius as close to zero as you can because it's going to minimize the effort in your steering system. Now, you probably think that's not a big deal, but when you're talking full hydraulic steering, if you work it a lot just on level ground, it'll actually start to overheat and you can aerate the fluid and you can actually lose steering power. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4, where we've just finished putting together two complete hybrid 609 axle housings. Now, so far, we've used some pretty high-end and pretty trick parts building these things, so we don't want to limit ourselves when it comes to the third member. The one downfall to the Ford 9-inch is that the housing itself was only ever available in a low pinion carrier option. Which that obviously means your drive shaft is more susceptible to trail damage, and the U-joint is easier to bind when the suspension fully droops out. Well, True High 9 makes a complete replacement carrier for the Ford 9 inch that offers a true two and a quarter inches of vertical separation for the pinion, making it, it a true high pinion differential. Now, the load bolt on the back of the ring gear and the three bearing pinion make this one of the strongest gear sets in the aftermarket. And we chose the 538 gear option. Now, they only sell these things completely assembled, so you know the gears are set up right in the first place, and you can opt for different lockers or supply your own. We chose an ARB air locker because it works kind of like a spool. It's either locked or it's open. Some unlimited slips out there actually load and unload your axle shafts, which can cause them to prematurely fail. And with the third member dropped in place, all that's left is to go ahead and measure for the axle shafts, and spider tracks will cut them specifically for this housing. And then this thing is pretty much done. Well, aside from bending up the chassis that's going to go on top of these. Now, everything we did today does not just apply to building a brand new axle assembly. It applies to when you use used parts as well. Everything from setting the width to the pinion offset, caster angle on your front knuckles. The one benefit to using all new parts like this is you're going to buy yourself a lot of reliability when you're out on the trail. And with the trend nowadays being more and more families out wheeling, having that reliability is often nice.